Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HardOfCP.com and today what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk a little bit about the ninth generation uh, Intel Core Series uh, CPUs, which are the Coffee Lake S Refresh, the new chipset, and we're going to unbox and show you this uh, MSI MEG Z390 Ace. Intel is uh, now releasing, we can talk about today, that Intel is releasing their new i9 series that will be on socket 1151 motherboards. And so out of that, we have the 9900K, the 9700K, and the 9600K, that's i9, i7, and i5. Um, the big to-do about this is, this is probably one of the weakest launches I've ever seen by Intel, especially with a new chipset rolling out behind it, because it's, it's very, very mean, minimal in the changes that we're seeing. Um, but what we're seeing, the 9900K will be 8-core, 16-thread, and we'll have a uh, 4.7 gigahertz boost with a for all cores and a 5 gigahertz boost clock for um, a single threaded application. That's spec on the 9900K. Uh, it does have a soldered TIM and it will have um, a 95 watt uh, TDP rating. The 9700K, which is now the i7, will be uh, 8 cores eight threads with 4.6 boost all, 4.9 gig boost for single core. And the 9600K will be a six core, six thread part with 4.3 and 4.6 boost. All those are all rated at 9500 TDP or 95 watt TDP, and they all have solder TIMS. So when you're talking about the new Z90 chipset, what we're really seeing here is the addition of um, CNVI, which is IEEE 802.11 AC Wave 2. Um, so what this does is give you a boost up to 1.73 gigabits per second uh, wireless access, which they're really hoping to basically go back and be good for streaming movies and uh, games, that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing that is new about the chipset is that now we have USB Gen or USB 3.1 Gen 2 actually on the, the, the chip. So it's not an extra controller. So that's actually built into the chipset. So what does all this mean? So if you've got, you're looking at uh, 8,000 series or 9,000 series. And so now we have the Z390 and we now we have Z370 and H370 and B360 and H310. So we got the whole 300 series family chipset with this stacked on top and MSI had a really nice slide that they had in their thing or in their uh, PDF presentation on this motherboard. So basically all your 8,000 chips will still work with everything they always have been and your 8,000 chips will work with the Z390. Your 9,000 or your nine generation, your 9,000 series uh, 99, 97 and 9600Ks will all work with your Z370s and everything and also the Z390. So Everything's still on socket LGA 1151, and uh, that just kind of shows you, yeah, they're just kind of stacking on. Hey, we got some new chips because AMD has put our, held our feet to the fire uh, with Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3, and we had to react. And so this is what we're getting. So we're getting a whole new series of motherboards out of this as well. Um, like I said, this is the MSI MEG 390 Ace. Um, MSI's branding has been all over the place lately. Uh, it seems like they change it every year, them and Gigabyte as well. Asus at least has stuck to their core tenants as far as their, their branding and their boards. Um, MSI and Gigabyte tend to be a bit more confusing. So, everybody says Meg because it says Meg. It says Ace right there. But according to MSI, you're supposed to say MEG. Everybody, it's just not going to happen. You know that, at least not in North America. You're going to say Meg Z390 Ace but that's not correct. If it's going to be MEG Z390, then it should be ACE, right? I don't know. You know, when the, when the motherboard guys went to capitalizing everything freaking five, six, seven years ago, this is kind of what's come out of it. Now you don't know what's, uh, what's supposed to be an abbreviation and what's an actual word. So MEG actually stands for MSI Enthusiast Gaming, which was their previous branding. So they're trying to shorten that up. So they want it shortened MEG but they don't want it shortened to Meg. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, 
The series down from this is the MPG, which obviously you can't make into a word. That's MSI Performance Gaming. And then you have the, uh, the MSI Arsenal Gaming below that, which is MAG, or MAG, which is what they're going to say. So anyway, we're looking at the MAG Z390 Ace today. And uh, I have not opened this box yet, so you are literally getting to see it with me. So this is a review board. This is something you don't see too often. So this is actually a media sample uh, performance qualification. And they started doing this a few years ago, which, uh, so it tells here what they tested this with, what memory, blah, blah, blah. Hey, that the, they even show you some scores here. I mean, this has got the guy that signed by, hey, did it on this date. So what this really does is, honestly, what this does is, is this shows that the board actually works before it got to us. Because getting dead boards used to be an issue. And uh, especially on very, very early production samples. So let's get this out of here. So quick look what we got in the box. We've got a uh, SLI header, which of course you won't be using those anymore with new RTX cards. We got a little bit of uh, marketing. We do have our drivers still on CD. All these should come on USB sticks now. It's just ridiculous to have them still on CDs. Uh, we got a true gaming badge. Got some more stickers there. What is this? I don't know, really know. There's nothing in the bag. Or there is, I'm sorry. That is something. Ah, that's the screws for uh, retaining some of our uh, M.2. We've got a whole host of uh, Mystic Light Infinity attachments because this thing is certainly RGB enabled. We've got, uh, what else do we have here? We have our antennas for our wireless SATA cables more SATA cables. So there you go. It's fairly, it's a, it's a fairly, it's a mid-level board on the top end line. The Godlike is one above the Ace. It does come with a bit more stuff. So that's what's in the box. So this is the built-in IO panel. We do have our CMOS flashback, our CMOS clear button here. We also have um, our BIOS flashback plus button. You do not need a CPU to, uh, to use that. Over here in red, we have our USB uh, 3.1 Gen 2. Then we've got a Type-C connector as well. We've got a little MSI Gaming. This uh, NIC on here is a killer NIC. It's the E2500 gigabit LAN. So let's see more USB. Here's our wireless connectors and obviously our sound connectors. It's so right over here on the side of the board. We've got two 8-pin uh, CPU powers as well as the 24-pin uh, down on the lower edge of the board. So on the Ace here, I'll, uh, you've got this screen and it's kind of like one of those infinity screen things. We'll plug this in and I'll show you what the RGB is all about. So for our VM, our VRM power on the uh, Ace, we do have, um, we have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got 13 uh, phase VRM on this. Got a nice clean slot area. We do have, fan header here we got more fan headers here and here we do have some rgb connections here rgb connections here i think these uh, uh, rgb connections here these use, these also will interface with coarse air as well so looking around to the slot side of the card we've got our two primary pcie by 16 slots here and we're nice and spread out here so if you are looking at using some of the new um, RTX uh, NVIDIA cards that have the uh, 2.75 slot width, you're going to be just fine here because we, we've got enough room. Uh, I know a lot of people have made fun of the 2.75 slot width. I really like the idea a whole lot in that you don't have your cards coming up right next to each other. So it gives you a little uh, room for breathability. So one of the things we do have... M.2 here, we have M.2 here, then we have M.2 over here as well. Uh, this one does come with the heat sink on it. These other two do not, and this is one of the things the less expensive board has. Um, the Godlike has covers for all these, so it's got a little bit better look to it, a little bit more finished look. Uh, surely that you may care, you may not. Obviously, if you don't, you don't want to pay for it, so we're not paying for that here. The uh, Audio Boost. HD, everything is, is nice and uh, cordoned off like is, uh, it's pretty much customary on these high-end boards nowadays. The uh, 
what we have oh yeah the intel wireless is a 9560 as well so the audio boost the um, chipset on the high def or the high definition audio here is a alc 1220 audio processor i know the godlike has a dac on it so it's a little bit advanced in the sound as well so down on our buttons down on the board we've got a power and reset and right here you can turn this little knob msi has made this look a little bit uh, different lately this is their game boost and so what this is is an automatic overclocking feature this is you can use you can actually do this in the bios as well you never have to touch this thing on the board and actually it's gotten a little bit better looking it doesn't look near as cheap as it used to uh, so what game boost does gives you automatic overclocking profiles so if you remember on the i9 9900k spec clocks are 4.7 and 5.0 so msi is telling us where their game boost what they are seeing is 5.4 uh, overclocking and 5.7 on single threaded loads. With the 9700K, they're seeing 5.3 and 5.6. With the 9600K, they're seeing 5.0 uh, and 5.3. So I'm going to tell you that the I've never really tremendously liked the Game Boost feature. But once we get these new CPUs in our hands, if the MSI Game Boost is giving us those kind of clocks as easily as turning on the BIOS, then that is something we'll surely look at. So if we turn this over and look at the back, there's a, there's a couple interesting things here. Uh, you got uh, NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire certification. One of the things, so if you see here, here, and here, so this is something I've never seen before. We have the case standoff keep out zone. So obviously they're worried about the circuitry getting shorted out uh, in your case. So that's definitely uh, something I guess you need to look at. I don't know. We'll lay it down. I don't see why that would be an issue. All of our uh, attachment points are nice and double grounded as they usually are. So we'll see about all that. So as you can see here, as far as RGB goes, this is probably one of the least offensive boards we've seen in a while. Um, we do have this crazy thing over here on the VRM cooler uh, unit. Let me give you a better shot of that. So as you can see, we have this whole mirror effect going on here that gives us kind of that infinity tunnel kind of look that you're looking straight down at on the ACE. And I'm sure that can be turned off as well. So that is a quick look at the MSI MEG Z390 ACE or the MEG Z390 ACE, which you know what everybody's going to call it. And uh, it's a good looking board. It's going to be at a medium price point for the, uh, for the enthusiast side. And uh, once we get on the test bench, we're surely going to give you a review on it and tell you what we find out. This is Kyle Bennett with HardOCP.com.